Northampton Community Television over there, and by the North Street Neighborhood Association <coughs> over here. Our videographer is Craig Rogers, and Mimi later. <coughs> um, we have someone here from the staff who's going to talk to us about um, fiscal 2014 drinking water supply protection and a grant she has applied for in our name. Um, she has another appointment, so I'm asking for your permission to take her out of order. Second. All in favor of hearing from the call out of order. Aye. Thank you. Okay, so DPW was selected for uh, FYI 2014 drinking water supply grant. Um, and this will assist in purchasing a 26.5 acre parcel located in Conway. Uh, the grant award was, um, is for $64,450. Um, so DPW has received all the contract uh, paperwork from the state, and um, we need the, the board signature on the project agreement, which um, I, I think Ned sent an email around with, with a copy of that. So, um, there are some new requirements for, for grant recipients. Um, the first is that a baseline documentation and land management plan be um, completed, uh, and installation of a sign acknowledging receipt of the drinking water supply um, program funds. And then the last is that um, public access not be prohibited on the parcel. So none of these, these requirements really um, scare me, except the fact that the, the public access is currently not how um, not how we operate mm -hmm. first pilot. We basically um, don't allow public access, except for a few exceptions. Snowmobile riding has an exception. Hiking along the Hen Hong Trail has an exception. And then we have had a history of allowing um, faculty and, and students from the, the five colleges um, and New England, Wildflower, New England Wildflower Society to access water supply property. Um, so what I've also done is, in addition to getting you guys the project agreement, I've also changed, um, amended the existing public access policy to include um, two more bullets, which um, the first bullet would be to allow public access on only the parcel that's, that's needed, um, and then also to, to include a bullet for um, allowing access for educational research purposes, which has been... So the first bullet point, allowing public access, is specific to this Conway parcel? Yes. But the education piece is for all watersheds? Yes, and, and typically how that's done is um, the, the faculty will, will email me directly and, and we'll have an understanding of, one, what they're doing out there, and then where they're going to be doing it. So. Do, you, do you have a map showing the location of the parcel? I, I don't, um, but I might actually have, <coughs> it's in Conway. It's been along the way before. Yes, I'm sorry, it's, yeah, it's within the watershed to the Rhino of the world. I have one. Hey, city engineer or something. There's a map. Thanks, Jim. Oh, well, Jim's putting that up. Right? <laughs> What's that? Well, Jim was, is putting that up. I, I, was, I have to admit, I was reading the, your amendment thinking, how would you know when you were straying outside of the 26 acres? Are you proposing signage all around the parcel? Um, and, and then the part B is, if it works for that 26 acres, perhaps we should be thinking about a broader review of this policy? In terms of allowing access? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I, I mean, it just seems I'm struck by the contradiction that those 26 acres are okay, then the surrounding 500 acres not so much. The contradiction is the string attached to this grant that would like to take to purchase the property. Well, I, right? I, I, I get that, right. but if, if, if I don't think we would be back in, in front of the board looking to revise that policy if it wasn't for this grant. So would we be? intellectually more honest to say no to the money? I, mean, I get it, we're not going to do that, but... Yeah, I mean... Th there's a... Yeah, no, 
it's a, it's a good it's a good question. I mean, we don't think there'll be any harm to the watershed by making the modification of the policy, which is why Nicole is here talking about it. But it's certainly a broader issue. I mean, if the board wants to to review public access to all watershed land, much broader issue to, to talk about pros and cons of something like that. I have the exact same thoughts you just expressed, and um, I think it, it, what I read though went one step further and said only outside the zone one area. Isn't that, isn't that the state requirement? Zone A. Zone, zone A. a. Zone A. Uh -uh. Right. So, so that's what we're, in managing the watershed. Aren't we most concerned about the activities that take place right adjacent to the reservoirs? Um, it, it, it seems like we, we have no. If if we if we pass this the way it is, and someone trespasses on part of the watershed that's outside that area, we don't have much of an argument to say, oh, we should have been over here and not over here. And so I, I had the same thought. It, maybe we should consider the whole access issue. I don't think it's something we have to resolve at this no. moment. No. And, and some signs <coughs> should be posted as as if it were a post-it sign, but it would say just the opposite to, to identify some yeah. points along the perimeter. Sure, sure. Um, the property right now borders, the, the property boundary is, is pretty clear in that it, it um, borders Smith College property, which is well marked. Um, so it borders the, the road on one side, Smith College. You want to show them a big map? Uh, put that up there for yeah. you. Oh, sorry. Okay, so the parcel's right here. Smith owns right here. That's not well shown on this map. But this is all Smith land, and it's well marked here. This is an old road here, which folks do use for hiking. Um, so we would just need to verify that this parcel, that this boundary, which is actually city property already, is marked. Because right now this is this is marked with um, is posted for, for no trespassing and presumably this is as well, um, but we, we would have to verify that. And then this the boundaries here wouldn't be marked. It wouldn't it would have no posting. And in terms of the signage, um, the signage I'm thinking is maybe a kiosk or or a big sign that's acknowledging um, the drinking water supply grant program for the funds. I think that's what the state needs in terms of signage. But we can mark the property however we want. And I think in a case like this, we wouldn't be marking it as, um, as posted for no trespassing. We could just mark it as um, city of North Hampton Morris for property. I, I, have, to, I have to say, You know, you, you think uh, you wouldn't be surprised to find that members would pop up with a policy. You know, they'd be thinking of ways that maybe there's, is there any way to allow people some access to the property? I, I think it just feels like something a little more innovative could occur. Terry, uh, people do access the property now illegally. And I think to open it up with a wider policy would result in a lot more use, publication of trail maps on the internet, a lot of other people coming. It's an issue that we grapple with every day in terms of the people that use the site, use the, the land that we own, the activities <coughs> that they that they do, hiking, ATV use, horses, some of them more disruptive than others, trying to manage the water quality impacts of these illegal trespassing things is something that we grapple with every day. Nicole's been working with a range of hired environmental police to do some outreach to the people that are illegally accessing the property. It's a very sort of complicated thing. I, I, I get it. You walk out there, it's beautiful, and there are a lot of people that want to hike. Some things are give you less heartburn than other things, but there are a lot of activities out there, dirt bikes and a lot of other things that are, that are problematic. So opening things up entirely, I think, would raise a lot of questions about just a lot more use. And... Um, you know, it's something, it's a difficult question. We, we talk internally about these things quite a bit. The Conway State Forest is, is nearby, and a lot of these other activities people could do 
and it's a blessing and a curse because some of that property is contiguous with city property. So, you, you know, where are the lines? Nicole's done a good job making sure that the property boundaries are posted, no trespassing and that sort of thing. But, you know, we had a forest walk recently and um, some of the neighbors came out and they said, you know, I see people with ATVs out there and it's destructive and, you know, what should we do? So, and they're concerned, but by the same token, they're probably, they may be hiding out there themselves. So, you know, the balance of intensity of use and what's legal or not legal, you know, these are things that we try to grapple with. It's kind of a complicated thing. But we're happy to explore it if the board wants to explore it. And tonight, to the extent of trying to get, make, make the board aware of the string on the grant, that it's, it's something we need to at least broaden it relative to this, uh, relative to this particular parcel. Yes. In order to in order to get the money, we need to allow access on this person. So I make a motion that we adopt the modified watershed land protection policy use use policy as proposed by Nicole. Second. Okay. Any further discussion? All in favor of approving this modification to the policy? Aye. 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 Great. So do we have something to sign this evening? Yes. yes. So, BJ, there are no minutes, or no minutes, just no meeting minutes. No meeting there are minutes. Hearing minutes. Yeah, you have hearing minutes. I said to the. So you have to table them first. Okay. Make a motion that we table the minutes of December the fourth. So we're tabling the minutes for the meeting of December. All in favor of that? Next, the December 4th hearing, which we do have minutes. Move approval. Second. Any amendments or corrections? Yes, that's perfect. Perfect. Thank you, Mike. I told him. Six out of order? So moved. Second. All in favor of uh, discussing Bottoms Road next? Aye. 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 Do you want to lead off now? Um, sure. Um, basically, the history of what we've done on Bottoms Road to date is that it was viewed by the Board of Public Works on October 23rd, 2012. On the 24th of October, 2012, I, no recommendation came out of the Board of Public Works. Um, as everyone knows, the, all the no votes were re-looked at again on um, September 11th, 2013, and there was no action taken on this particular one. Sometime in November, uh, the city received a petition uh, from residents for Bottoms Road, which had been absent before, and um, we had a public hearing on December 4th out at the road. We just approved the meeting minutes for that, and now it's come to you for a um, discussion and vote. Okay. And does the staff have any um, recommendation from your perspective? I think it's a private way and should stay a private way, personally. Mike, you who's been our conscience on this? Stuff? <laughs> um, I think we need to be consistent with our previous actions, and um, and I always thought that this was a difficult one because it certainly looks like a long driveway to me, but we have approved um, other narrow, uh, unpaved roads as public ways, and I think we should continue to be consistent, so I'd recommend that we um, pass our recommendation on to the city council. Motion I second that. Mm -hmm. Nope. So a yes vote will um, 
be a recommendation to the city council that they accept Bottoms Road as a public way. All in favor of the motion? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay. May, may I make a comment? Sure. I just want to express my <coughs> gratitude for revisiting this issue when we met two weeks ago. I was surprised and, and grateful that, that a citizen's board would take the time to do that. And when I mentioned to Alex Lane last week how surprised I was that this was happening, he said he wasn't surprised at all. He said that he felt that government was the last repository of moral responsibility and light. And I thought, we'll leave that as a bumper sticker. At least I'm going to pass it. <laughs> no, thank you. <laughs> So, thank so you. any other questions? I, I mean, I know you've all made a special trip in this evening. Um, so what's going to happen is, uh, as they may have explained it <laughs> at the meeting, um, <laughs> we'll forward the recommendation to the city council mm -hmm. after we've prepared the other documents necessary to do that. So it involves uh, doing a survey to the extent that that's necessary and the legal work and we take the entire package along with our recommendation to the City Council. At this point, you are just about dead last in line. Uh, and the process is not going terribly speedily, even as it is. So it could easily be uh, springtime before your package is ready. However, <coughs> having secured the recommendation for acceptance, we'll begin plowing Bottoms Road in the meanwhile. So it's, it's now a public, it, it was, so the gist of it is it'll become a public road. I know there's been some discussion over the years about access. Now anyone with property obviously has access um, mm -hmm. to use the road. And I, I gather you're go it's, a, it's going to be a, a legal um, investigation as to, as to whether an easement or, or acquirement is the easiest way to go. Yeah, we haven't gotten too much back from the city solicitor uh -huh. on the more complicated roads. Um, so we really don't know exactly what path he's going to take. Uh -huh. um, the, the ones that have gone all the way through the process at this point mm -hmm. were the ones that were super simple. Mm -hmm. um, we haven't had a complicated one yet, so and I'm this not is sure what This is Alan. Um, Seawall. So we don't know the answer. Well, thank you. Okay. Thanks. You know, did, did you have public comment? I, I have to ask if anyone has public comment. Well, I usually have something to say. <laughs> would, would, would you mind if we have public comment now? No, I'm, I'm sorry. No, there is a public. <laughs> I got so excited about the NCTV camera that I... Uh, uh, I went to the Ryan Road meeting the other day. I got there late. Timing wasn't exactly perfect for some of us who try to keep a regular schedule. I'd like to congratulate you people for standing up to all the darts, arrows, rocks, and everything else that was thrown at you. But as predicted, the thing that I think brings the most hostility and the most conflict is the exemptions. Everybody thinks they have an exemption, or that guy's exemption isn't as good as it should be, or whatever. And it just seems like a can of worms that you're getting so few rentals. Do you mean exemption or credit? Or well, credit, okay, the credit. same thing. All right, I'm, I'm interchanging okay. the words, I think. But a credit. And I don't know, it seems like there's a big push from some big landowners for more credit than the average homeowner is eligible for. And I think I said once before that one guy's credit, because of a holding pond, is the next guy's sump pump. You know, if I put a, if my neighbor puts a holding pond in his backyard, I'm going to be pumping it out, and it's got to go somewhere. So it's it's just so complicated that I'm just wondering if to get the process with less hostility from the public, that the credits could just sort of be put in the background somehow. That's just my observation from that one meeting. Now I don't know. Did you have the other one last night? We did. It was mm -hmm. a during, out, a storm, surprisingly. during a storm emergency. <clears throat> These people were very enthusiastic about uh, the stormwater question. Um, but thank you. And then one more about your watershed thing. The Quabbin Rock watershed is accessible to the public okay. for very limited uses. And I think the public knows that. So there 
there are no snowmobiles, there are no horses, there are no bicycles except on the paved old roads. And if you touch the water, you're in handcuffs. So, you know, if we keep buying <coughs> conservation land for people to go hiking on, and you don't see a heck of a lot of people on that conservation land, you wonder why the watershed land should be any more popular than conservation land as far as restricting access. You know, it's interesting that, uh, you know, it's a state agency that makes these grants available. So on one hand, the state is saying, here's some money, you need to have some public access. And on the other hand, the DEP, another state agency that oversees water supply, says we don't really like public access on water supply lands. So, you know, these two agencies who all fall under one umbrella, you, know, you definitely get mixed signals when you're trying to manage water supply. But, uh, well, that's a novel. Uh, so Please next, uh, for your consideration, oops, <laughs> twice, uh, we have a contract for engineering services related to the clarifier feed pipe check valve replacement uh, at the water treatment plant to Tata and Howard in the amount of seventeen thousand. Approval. Uh, this is a, a design contract with Tata and Howard. The board may recall a few months ago we had uh, an emergency replacement contract to repair one of the feed lines into one of the outflow clarifiers at the plant. And the, um, the feed line is a large cast iron, 12 inch cast iron pipe, uh, ductile iron pipe into the clarifier, um, was damaged because of the functioning of this wafer style check valve. And, um, <coughs> since the, the emergency repair, we didn't actually know why the pipe was cracked. We had suspected it was a faulty pipe. And it wasn't until the thing was actually dismantled we had Tate and Howard do some more investigation into it that um, they came up with a recommendation that this style of valve and this application at the plant should be replaced by another valve. Um, their, their concern is that this type of wafer style check valve um, over time will um, continue to degrade these pipes that go into three, to three of the clarifiers. Um, so the contract here is for them to come up with a uh, a design of another style check valve to see if it'll fit in the location that we have. We've got some tight quarters down there in the pipe gallery. Um, they would provide us with the specification and the, the details for the, the new clarifier and then city staff, engineering staff would do the bidding um, to do the replacement. Um, so that's this contract. It's uh, 17500 uh, 484 so, Jim, are you saying that they would give you biddable documents, but then the staff would handle the bid process? Or they would give you enough information for the staff to create the bid documents? Staff would create the bid documents. They would give us the technical spec specification and the detail on the valve, and then we would put it into a bid document with a contract and everything in our bid. Mike? So the price objection is high. And, and I wonder if it includes some of the investigation work that's already taken place, or? It's funny. How funny is it? Interesting funny. Um, I had the same question when they submitted the proposal. I said, it seems like it's high. Um, their estimated construction cost for this, um, they have indicated it's about 110000 And since we're doing the bidding and some of the other work, it just seems like high as a percentage of the cost. Um, their reply was, uh, well, I guess they're concerned. There's some unknowns about the geometry of fitting a different style of valve in there. Uh, there's a very tight space between um, the couple of clarifier and some of the uh, other lines within the, within the, uh, the pipe gallery. So they said uh, the change in laying length may require reconfiguration of the feed pipe from the clarifier to the flow control valve. And the estimate reflects the labor for this. Uh, as you know, location of these, the location of these valves complicates construction as well. Um, we've also included electrical and plumbing time for disconnect and reconnect of existing equipment. Based on the uncertainty of piping modifications required, I would re recommend keeping the engineering budget as previously submitted. So it'll be a not to exceed sort of time and expense contract. We'll watch what they're doing. If they can drop this valve out and put another one in, in the space and nothing needs to be done, it will be a very easy 
which can be a very easy project. Um, any of the configuration work or any of the complexities that may come up. The wafer valve actually is a very narrow valve and um, getting something else in there, they're concerned um, about exactly how much reconfiguring is necessary for that. So for that reason, I, uh, I let it drop my, my request to make it uh, you know, uh, lesser of a contract. Is a wafer valve a butterfly valve? It's um, it's not it's not like a butterfly valve. Uh, well, I guess in a way it is. In a way it is. Yeah. Uh, was this a the result of an original design flaw? It's the original design. Um, That's flawed. I mean, I'm not. I didn't do enough work to say that it's flawed. Um, we we did a lot of we did have Tate and Howard do some work on the functioning of these wafer valves and is this a common issue um, to which they reported no um, so it's not clear to me exactly what the problem is other than we had concerns about how these wafer valves function and the hinge that they that they're on and the ability of that to last any amount of time. Um, so we don't want to rely on a valve, one valve that's already shown the ability to wear through a very strong ductile iron pipe, um, so we want to replace them. Um, is it a flaw? Um, could be a manufacturing issue with that type of valve. Um, I wouldn't say, talking out loud, I don't think it's a design flaw. There's no reason for the designer to expect that this piece of equipment which fits in this application shouldn't function properly. But uh, you know we don't have any recourse with the manufacturer. Our only recourse is to say that's a bad valve. You know it's beyond the warranty period, and we don't want to rely on it. See, I thought you were going in a different direction, which is <clears throat> when the original architecture engineering was d done, didn't they accommodate the possibility that they were going to have to change out these valves? That's where I thought you were going with this. No. I mean, you don't you don't you don't build a, 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 an automobile engine so that you've got to pull the motor in order to change the oil. Yeah, I mean, it's a large, complicated facility. This is not, as the board knows, this is not the first time we've been in front talking about trying to tweak something that was built five years ago or six years ago. Um, we replaced another, the main uh, pressure reducing valve, into the plant. We, we replaced an emergency overnight installation a couple of years ago. That was something similar, where it was a valve that was used that um, was no longer functioning as as intended, needed to be replaced by something else. And there was also some configuration of the main raw water feed line into the pipe gallery that needed to be changed that night. Um, so you know, we identify these things and we try to make the improvements as we can. And wish we didn't. But. I guess compared to twenty six million dollars, it's. It's like a piece of lint in your suit, you know. It's kind of um, so it was scoring, this, this valve was scoring the iron pipe? Yeah, I should have brought photos. I was a little distracted today, but we have, we have photos. It was more than scoring. It actually wore away the inside of the pipe, so the cement lining, the, the, uh, the wall, the, the ductile iron the wall was actually worn through to the point where the pipe was leaking. There was water coming through the pipe wall. Which, I mean, these, are, these are very, I mean, this is not, this is, these are big pipes. So. so in the end you're satisfied with the 17,000? And it may well be under that if they can find an easy replacement. Right. And we'll watch them make sure that you know, if it's easy then we'll get the kit also. So, and until then, it, it will just tell us what's the inter intermittent don't need anything intermittent. Um, we have one of the valves we know is not functioning right, so mm -hmm. it's probably banging away down there a little bit, doing some damage. Um, we think if we replace it within the next few months, it shouldn't be any, any real long-term issue. Okay. Two of the other ones, as far as we can tell, based on the sound, can't see inside the pipe, right? But based on you know not hearing any racket with these other two, we think they're probably functioning okay at the moment. So the plan might be to do the first two and 
monitor the other two? There's three of them. The plan, I think, would be to replace all three of them because right? we just yeah. don't have any faith in them. When they do, when you do get a failure, all of a sudden it's an emergency sure. because we can't produce enough water for the city. <coughs> okay. Great. Okay. Okay. All right. So, uh, all in favor of approving this contract to have Tate and Howard uh, come up with a potential valve replacement. Aye. Aye. Next is change order number one to contract 101-14 for the Chestnut Street Water Main Replacement to A. Martins and Sons in the amount of 4100 Move approval. Second. We had a couple of small issues with uh, additional work that we uh, required Martin to do on the project out on Chestnut Street. It was, um, this, the change order work basically is for the installation of three hydrant extensions um, that were that involved the installation of some material and labor beyond um, that which was shown in the drawings. Um, work was documented by a resident inspector and the costs were reviewed by him. One, one other aspect of the change order was some time and material to, um, to repair a water main break at the intersection of uh, High Street where um, the contractor ran into a uh, in, in broke a water main that wasn't marked in the field. So he was unaware of the presence, so we, we were culpable for, uh, for that particular change. So the, the total value is $4,108 for these things. Questions? Comments? All in favor of approving this change order? Aye. 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 Uh, next, another change order, number one, to contract 254-13 for the residential food waste collection to alternative recycling in the amount of no money. It's a time extension only. Move approval. Second. So this contract is moving the completion date to February 28th, 2014. Well, we put this out for an RFP again to uh, solicit a new um, contractor to take over this service, mm -hmm. or perhaps a new award to alternative recycling again. Is that program working well? Yes. Yeah. Good participation. It is. I started using it a few months ago. I have to tell you, it's the most disgusting stuff inside those containers. <laughs> you know, your own garbage looks okay, but you put it into somebody else's, it doesn't look so good. <laughs> All right, so um, all in favor, a yes vote is to extend the contract until February and give us time to do a new RFP. All in favor? Aye. 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 Great. Change order number two to contract 294-12 for the North Street reconstruction of Caracas construction in the amount of $60,000 and extend the time to September 30th next year. Move approval. So, so the time extension is so that we can release the retainage, the 1% of retainage that's been reduced to. Uh, as far as the change order uh, was done for was for a police item, that was traffic control. We had a large overrun on this project. It was an underestimate by engineering. Uh, there's a memo here attached to the uh, agenda change order. It says change order number two is increase in contract value of 60000 required due to increased expenditures for traffic police item 99.9.1. The traffic police item actually exceeded the estimated value of 50000 by $89,573. But all the unit prices have been completed at below the estimated contract quantities and values, so there is no required, it is not required to adjust the contract value for the full amount of the traffic police overage. So the project is substantially complete, and they're not anticipating any further change orders on the project. And do we, uh, just curiosity, did we estimate the uh, traffic details in house? Or? We did. Yeah. So, speaking with Felix today, Con Street lasted a three month period, and we expended about $42,000 in police details. This project, if you look at the winter off, it's almost been a year-long project, so it was really not a a great estimate by us and a learning lesson for us to on a larger project. Any questions or comments? All in favor of approving the um, contract change and the time extension. Aye. Aye. Uh, next, change order number two to contract 89-14 for the electrical testing of the emergency generator and main switch gear at the wastewater treatment plant to Amp Electrical. 
come out of thirty three hundred dollars. The board may recall that um, Amp Electrical was the firm that uh, the city contracted with to do the comprehensive electrical testing down at the wastewater plant. Um, one of the recommendations from uh, from our consultant at the conclusion of all the testing was that um, the work that's contained in this change order be done immediately. Um, and basically, um, in their report, they're describing the motor control center. Um, there was a thermogram done for the main breaker at MCC2, which showed a high temperature, and contact resistance testing was performed. It was determined the cable connections were tight, but the breaker itself was defective. It should be replaced immediately. So we request a quote from AMP um, to be able to do this work um, as soon as we can, we can do it. And, uh, they submitted this price for the this replacement um, of $3,353, and that was reviewed by electrical engineering. They said it was appropriate for the work being asked. Any questions or comments? All in favor of approving this contract for the um, break? Aye. Uh, uh, stormwater and flood control update. We have finished our little um, round throughout all of the wards. Um, so we've had, Mike did one and I did a few. Uh, we've been to all of the wards so far, and the Chamber of Commerce had two. And I, I thought they all went pretty well. Um, questions? <coughs> there, there were some people who were not happy about the prospect of a new team. But by and large, the questions were kind of uh, procedural or implementation oriented. Like, well, if you're going to count the driveway, I have a shared driveway. Now, does that mean, how does that work? Or I live in a condo complex. Will I get the bill or does the association get the bill? They all, not all, but <coughs> the vast majority, I think, were focused on just the details. I thought reasonably accepting of the broad premise. Can I just say, you did an extraordinary job presenting last night. I was so pleased that you were up there doing the presentation. And you, even though I, I know you've done it before, but you weren't at all bored. You were very much engaged in doing the presentation. It's cool stuff. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank no, you. And, thank and you. I was thinking how nice it was to have you up there and Mike at the meeting. Uh, if you've watched the YouTube video, I thought Mike did a great job. I'll have to watch that. But, um, so there is a YouTube video. More precise than I am. I, I wonder. <laughs> No, but they made it very accessible. Exactly. To and, exactly. Uh, and, and I think that was a, I just wanted to just Thanks. give you a, a... So it looks like uh, Ward 7 may do another one. I, I get the impression that Elisa Klein, uh, I mean, Dave Murphy was certainly encouraging her to have one for Ward 7. Um, they also made the suggestion, and I thought it was excellent, that, that Jacob said about the workshop that mm -hmm. happened this summer, like, about the stormwater, it was like citizens. Did you go to that? The training on stormwater advocates or something? Like that? Oh, it was like a, in June, and it was a two part um, uh, op opportunity, and it was sponsored by the state. Or PVPC right. was actually the staff. I did the PVPC one, yeah. yeah. That was really good. That's what yeah. Deb was talking about. Yeah. And it sounded like it might be very worth our while to bring that back and have another one in North Hampton. The P the I won't say the downside, but the PVPC one was really targeted at municipal officials, and it wasn't uh, there. There really wasn't any general public there. Um, was Deb at that one? I didn't see her, oh. but I don't know her on site. Okay. So, um, uh, but again, you know, the, the people who were there were, you know, deputy city administrator for her and, and that kind of thing. And, and, she, and, and I'm sure she went to a different one than we did. Yeah. Yeah. So the, those are not the same workshops, but... Uh, okay. Deb, Deb went to one at Lily Library, and Chris went to a more comprehensive one down in uh, Holyoke. Right, yeah. Okay. yeah. Well, I, I thought that her suggestion about bringing one back, now that, you know, we've done, gone through the, and done the board's board presentations, and it sounds like city council are going to, the new city councilors are going to need a little time before they ramp up and start really grappling with it, that it might be a valuable thing to put on the schedule for something in the spring. Yeah, Doug and I talked about a bunch more things like that. I mean, it just happened that, that they were coming in to do an over library and the timing was, was nice. But moving forward, you know, that type of educational outreach thing is definitely something that was talked about. Mm -hmm. um, as a 
follow up to your comment on what Terry I did receive a nice note from Robert Ross at the Florence Civic and Business Association thanking uh, thanking the board for the presentation and the information. He thought it was a you know it was a nice way to get the information out and he said it was accessible and he said you did a nice job and I said, Wow, I said, Well I said, you know, Terry has an engineering background and he said, Really? He says, I just remember mm -hmm. Terry when he was dressed up as a Santa Claus at some party like a million years ago or something. That's true. <laughs> So I, I won't ask him what the details on that while we're on camera. Uh, he's from Chesterfield, I think. And my wife was the kindergarten teacher in Chesterfield. And I was the Santa at the Chesterfield party. <coughs> so, do you have an engineering background? Yeah, my degree's in civil engineering. Oh, I didn't know that. Well, that explains a lot. And there was a uh, oh, yeah. big recession yeah. in engineering uh, back around uh, 1970. Um, the only game in town was UMass. They were just building to beat the band. Um, and I worked for a while at kind of a low-level job there. But then I was, I, I discovered bicycles and then stereos. And, yeah. Well, I was at the Ward 6 one that Michael did, and I thought he did an outstanding job as well. Um, and that was a, um, that was an engaged group of people. But, but, but the majority of their questions were not practical. They were, they were, how do we pay for this? And we don't want to pay for this. They were not, they were not related to, there was very little of that sort of case by case kind of thing. And fortunately, um, Bill Blake was there and took it upon himself to, um, to handle the, 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 the portions of the conversation that were not technical. Jim also did an outstanding job. Um, fielding questions that I think in some cases were a little bit outside of his, of his comfort zone, but I thought he did a really good job. Thank you. Did I look at questions? Yeah. You started to answer one part, and, and yeah. it goes over here, you know. Bill Dwight told me, he said, you shouldn't have to take heat like that. And I said, well, I couldn't figure out whether it was a hot night on Ryan Road or a cold night. <laughs> process will occur quickly enough to be incorporated into the budget for next year. Okay. And my concern is, and, and I'm actually going to, the mayor has a fireside chat once a month, <coughs> something, I'm not quite sure what the format is, but I'll be with the mayor Friday morning for NCTV, and I hope I can talk to him a little bit about this, but um, if, as Dave Murphy was talking about last night, this slips into late March, it might not happen, if it does happen, but it might not happen until uh, it's too late to weave it into the budget for next year. I, I suspect if it came, became, the money became available in March, we could we try real hard. Mm -hmm. But uh, it'd be nice to get this resolved sooner. My concern is if it doesn't happen, the Army, I suspect, I, I think our problems would be first with the EPA, right? Eventually, the Army, but the EPA, I don't think, has any elasticity once the permit comes out. These are the rules. It makes it pretty hard to comply. Yeah. So, is it your sense that once these, once the city council takes it up, that they might come to the that we're going to do a whole rework of it? No, but the way David, so Dave Murphy last night was answering a few questions. Uh, he had a great. Um, small dissertation, it was more than a comment, less than a dissertation, a few paragraphs about um, why it is that there's no funding, why this has been languishing for so long. And he said basically that he doesn't think in his entire time as a city councilor anyone has ever come to his door to push him to get busy and fund stormwater. But he hears from parents of kids in the school system all the time. You know, there, there are issues he hears about, and then there's this one here, which he never hears about. So, um, after that, he began kind of speculating how this process may unfold. <coughs> and he was guessing with three new members on the council, they would need a chance to uh, have committee assignments. The newly reformed committees might want another peek at this whole thing. There might be some duplication of effort. He was thinking sometime in March. 
it just doesn't make me anxious to see. You know, it feels like you've done a, this big push to get the conversation going, and it suddenly goes on stall. And then, then we get, you know, where are we on this? Well, my, I think the next thing we need to do is look at some of the other pieces and make sure we haven't waited until March to get the other pieces lined up. Is there legal work that has to be done in preparation for some kind of an enterprise fund? Uh, we have a request in front of the mayor for $35,000 to begin uh, cleaning up the database, making the information more accurate and more accessible. So someone could come in and say, listen, I live on uh, 52 Henshaw, and uh, what, would my, what would my bill be? How many square feet of impervious surface on my residential property? I guess that's the best we can do is get everything ready so that if they say yes, we don't have a four or five months of moving forward. Well, and it, it, to me, it feels like the biggest thing unknown is the whole question about where credit, how are we going to handle those? And, yeah. and I might recommend that the first year we say no credit for anything until we figure out how this thing works. <laughs> yeah. Chris, I, I was just going to say, I mean, you know, I, I spent a lot of time thinking about the credit issue, and, and if it's, I, I, I don't, this is a situation where I don't want the perfect to be the enemy of good, and I, and I think that, um, you know, once we get the ordinance in place, um, even if we can't do the budgeting for the first year, if we can get it in place in time to do the collection, that's not a bad thing either. You know, we'll, we'll have a little money in the bank moving forward. So... Plus, I think once people finally have the real bill in their hand, they'll probably say, is it really worth <coughs> my while to make pick up all this fuss and, and to try to get some credit? Well, yeah. I, I, I think it depends on who you ask. I mean, you know, if it's if it's me and my rain barrel, you know, but if it's, if it's somebody who's putting in, you know, $10,000 worth of infrastructure as part of a, a renovation or something mm -hmm. like that, that's a, you know, that's, that's a different kettle of yeah, fish. No, I understand that. So Jim, Jim has done quite a bit of work on this and has a draft. Yeah, so we, we were, uh, Doug and I were working with the board subcommittee on some of the credit uh, and incentive issues a little while ago. And, you know, some of those things are, you know, are sort of laid out in outline format in terms of uh, value and, and lacking a lot of specifics that would go into an actual credit manual. I'll say there's been a lot of interest in the credits. I think Dick made a good point, too. Some people are interested in how can I get a credit, and other people are interested in making sure the other guy's credit isn't too big um, because there's sort of a sharing of, you know, if he gets a credit, then I have to pay his bill sort of thing. Um, so a lot, of, a lot of interest in it, I think, which is good. And um, I think to the extent that, um, and, and I think Chris made a good point as well, you can't have a perfect credit program. I mean, to, to some extent, not having the details of a credit program in the ordinance is a good thing because it leaves the board some ability to roll out kind of a, you know, you can get a baseline credit program together now and then add things to a tweak it or add something else or delete something as, as time goes on based on how effective things are. But there were basic aspects of a credit program that go back to the task force. You know, if a developer spent a lot of money on building stormwater infrastructure, it was pretty strongly felt that you know, if you spent a lot of money building a basin or infiltration system or something, that there should be some credit for that. So um, in our discussions with the board subcommittee, some of those things kind of fell out into an outline format where, you know, certain types of infrastructure existed on private land that could be a credit. Um, some approximate values of these credits were placed as well by the sub subcommittee. We started to talk about things like a maximum credit of 50% off a bill if you met a, a series of criteria. So. You know, that helps us get our arms around, you know, what, what are the values of all the credits. If you look at what all the credits would be, if everybody applied for them, how much money are we talking about and the impact on the budget? And, you know, we were talking about, uh, you know, somewhere in the fifty to $100,000 range if everybody applied. And, and we don't think that everybody would necessarily apply with, um, for a credit. Um, but, you know, that, so I guess my point is that having some additional detail with the credit program having it out there now I think would be helpful for people because then they can understand it because we're getting a lot of questions you're saying well there's a credit program and these are some of the things but without having specifics enough then you get into the questions that Dick was raising and you know, some other things that people have. So, 
might make sense to try to put a little more meat on the bones of the outline and start having a draft part of program circulated. Maybe Jim Doctor could do a movie on that. Yes. Everyone liked That's it. Great <laughs> movie. Oh, yeah. It was great. And made it just so even more accessible. Um, so that's basically it. Uh, I thought I would talk to the mayor uh, Friday, if we have a moment, and ask about the $35,000. Um, I agree with Jim that I think we should get the credit thing up there, at least as a proposal. And that might be a way to keep some of the public engaged mm -hmm. at the bridge to this new city council. Um, I've met with uh, Ryan Donald. Exactly, Ward 3, and with Elisa Klein, and I haven't met with the third new person. Mm -hmm. Who's my ward? I was going to say. Yeah. yeah. Ward. Haven't, haven't met that person yet. Um, but uh, both Ryan and Elisa seemed interested. I, Ryan's on board, and in Ward 3, he's excited about this. Um, and I thought Elisa's open, certainly open to it, too. But, she, you know, she's looking for help explaining to her constituents why they should care, why they should be involved, and, you know, be able to explain why <coughs> the, the bills are not too onerous for the people in Ward 7. That's all I got. Uh, which brings up private ways. <coughs> private ways. <coughs> Uh, we have three plans ready to go to City Council. We're waiting for uh, the City Solicitor to come up with a document order taking or easement and get signatures on to make those move forward. I sent them an email the other day in regards to that, trying to keep the process going. Um, just so the board knows, I've been approached by Willie Gay, Roger Sloan, and yesterday I met with Gordon Murphy and Floyd Andrews, who all, all own properties down on Center Court. I've talked to Terry about this, and I want to make sure the board is well aware that I'm having these conversations with these property owners on Center Court. They're trying to figure out how to make Center Court a public way. Uh, at the meeting yesterday I had with Floyd and Gordon, they asked that, could I be a moderator of some sort between the community down there and have a meeting here in this building in regards to try to figure out how all parties can get on board of having their concerns um, and issues resolved because they're kind of at odds with each other is what should be done down there. So I'm asking the board whether or not you want me to have a meeting with the community down there here about Center Court or you want your no recommendation to stay and move to City Council. Can you explain to me a little bit about the division that exists down there about how to move forward? The property is kind of interesting how there's an old right of way in there that was has some. They all have joint ownership too. However, it crosses some people's land, doesn't cross other people's land in there. Um, and they realize that we need a private or a public way of a nominal width down there, but nobody really wants to give anything up. This is what my take. The, the, the take is is uh, Roger doesn't want to give something up that he just built and you know has a new lawn established and so on and. Eric Schuer is not part of the conversation at this point, but everyone else down there is trying to figure out how to make this become a public way. I should just say, uh, I, on the other hand, have approached Ned to see if he and Jim could articulate under what conditions we would be, or they, the staff, would feel better about accepting the street. Um, at some point, the decision could be made politically. Uh, you know, these are not inconsequential property owners. They all know they're city councilors. Um, and another approach I was suggesting to Ned is, let's define what we think would be nece necessary before we could envision taking the property. Let's get put, put that on the table. We think that the drainage issue should be fixed. We think that the sewer line should be straightened out. Uh, wh whatever the issues are, we think that there should be curbing with, with curb cuts. I, I, I'm just speculating what it might be. Um, we might have to uh, 
it might involve doing something about those two parking spaces in the entrance. Okay. Um, Which but might, that at might least be problematic because that's in someone's deed already. I, need to I understand, places. and then Claire wouldn't be too happy about giving those, giving those up. But my point is that it'd be nice to just put it out there. This is what we think mm -hmm. ought to happen. If we're silent on this, then we leave a big, mm -hmm. you know, wide open situation. So I have two thoughts about that. My first thought is is going along with the Mike Conscious con concept, which is you want to make sure that if we use other, um, I, I, I'm thinking particularly about the um, uh, off uh, Route 66, that little condominium group, that this was similar to that, and that was like, yeah. pardon me? A cat avenue. Yes, I think that's right. So that we, if there are other similar things that we use to make the decision. On the other hand, I like the idea that we were um, forthcoming in terms of defining what it would mean and all the different items. They're very specific. No, they're very specific. Yeah. And if they look at that and go, oh, now I see why it's an issue, or now I see why our development of this issue it was on us to be a better situation. Yeah. But my alternative, so that's, I guess that's really two things. My, I have a third thing, which is that it is a very, very contentious issue, and they are a very uh, strong-minded group, and they've done a lot of good things for the city, and um, we want that to happen, but I'm so reluctant to have staff time being put into this situation of being on board, on board situation, and I'm very concerned about that concept. So being forthright, making making documents as a piece of, of legislation that could be creatively written, but going another step, I'm reluctant. Okay. Thank you. I'm I'd like to echo uh, what Rose was saying, but I I don't. Big sinkhole of staff time and not good results. And then we also have a, we have a an interest in the outcome in some way. Um, so I don't think we're there as a neutral party, and I think that that might make it difficult for us. You know, I think yeah. there are people who are trained to be mediators who facilitate these types of conversations. I think part of the challenge here, from what I understand, is that there are some property owners who are not part of the conversation who need to be part of the mm -hmm. conversation. And I think that that's probably the biggest challenge. I think, you know, when we had the drainage issue there a couple of years ago, we talked about what are the options for abetterment mm -hmm. that would compel mm -hmm. everybody to put something in the mm -hmm. till to take care of the drainage mm -hmm. issue, you know. I, but I, I do worry about staff time being committed to this and when clearly not all the parties who need to be at the table are at the table and we're putting our staff there and having them play a role. So, so just to, uh, I hear what you're saying. I wasn't implying that the staff should design these. I, I was just thinking if we could come up with a specific list of our issues. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That, yes, that, that that's help. what I'm talking about. I'm not imagining that you're going to be get out the cab and do the whole thing. That's good. Uh, and I didn't put that. So, and also, so you're. Specifically, you're reluctant to see Ned be the facilitator. I, I feel the same way. I don't think a, a public official ought to try to mediate private party disputes okay. at all. I, I, I think the best we can do is your suggestion. Right. If, if we can come up with a scenario that we think gets that to be a public way, then we ought to define that and then hand it to them and say, right. this is what we have in mind. Yeah, and we've left a vacuum here. Yep. So, and partly because I don't, we might struggle coming up with that scenario. Mm -hmm. Back of an envelope. I could do this. <laughs> you and I was right. telling Jen that you just have a lot of envelopes. envelopes huh? Back of an envelope. You and your engineering degree. That's <laughs> <laughs> so handy. <laughs> I'm not a PE. <laughs> Today it doesn't mean a whole lot in the city, but it's a story for another, story for another day. Um, <laughs> all right.
right, so it doesn't sound like, Ned, like there's much support for That's fine. you becoming the ombudsman of uh, Center Court. Okay. If anybody, it should be their city council. How, ultimate, ultimately, that's the person that's going to have to carry the water at the, at the you know, at the, at the, at the meeting. Yeah. The city council. Is that Gina? I don't know. Yeah. Four to four? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Four. So, is there support for um, the idea of trying to be a little more specific about exactly what we would like to see corrected uh, in order to support moving forward? Well, I think it's a necessity. I'll drop something for the board to review. Okay. It's you know it's 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 the most important of these oddball little streets. I mean, it's right in the middle of downtown. Of course, the long-term planning supports this kind of infill. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's a particularly messy example of it, but but it's it's like repairing the I think the sewers on King Street. Somebody needed to make a harder decision a lot earlier, and that did not happen. And so these are the consequences, but we shouldn't have to have our staff pay for that. Okay. Um, agendas accomplished. Here. Do you want us to review any of the earlier steps? Yeah, I was wondering if we'd start over. <laughs> <laughs> we approved by the just, road. A, just a quick, just a brief. We, we approved by the road. Okay. Yeah. I could. I could. Well, that was one of the issues that came up. Is, uh, the Bay State Village Association, you could say, was representing the neighborhood, but you know, it's a, it's really a small group, and we, we try to keep the neighborhood informed what's going on. But I think if there's going to be a group within the neighborhood that is specifically interested in keeping the bridge open, and maybe as as such as a historic thing, um, the discussion really was to form their own. Five hundred one C. That was close. Five hundred one C three. Five hundred one C three. That's a nonprofit. That's not a profit. Well, it would be a nonprofit. Yeah. Uh, so the Bay State Village Association is something like that. Not political. Put you in touch with the Upper Roberts Meadow Dam. I was people. just thinking the same thing. <laughs> so I, I, I think if you strung a bunch of fishing lines off there with little turbines on the end, you'd get some power. Yeah. <laughs> discussion of what that bridge falling in the river at all? There was some discussion about that, and yeah. you know, it was it was very difficult to not want to say, well, anything can be repaired. You could say that. So there are people interested in keeping it. Mm -hmm. Chris, how about you? Um, just two sort of related to DPW things. Um, the first is uh, the Jackson Street Prospect Avenue intersection seems to be working without the stop signs. Um, and then I can't remember which one we looked at, but it was one of the side streets off Prospect that goes all the way through the state on the private ways. I saw the guys surveying that the other day and I assumed it was I assumed it was for for, yeah, that for was us. Prospect Court. Prospect Court, yeah. Yeah. So they're out and about. They which, are. Is, which is cool. Did, did, did they take down the stop the four way stop? <coughs> no. No, no, the, no, but the ones that are in the middle of the road because of the plowing oh, okay. they have to right. take out of the way. But <laughs> but people are I think people had gotten used to it and yeah. are still Believe it. Yeah. Well, when, when, I'm, when I'm crossing Prospect, I definitely stop. <coughs> oh, yeah. Both ways. Absolutely. Just to make sure. Absolutely. Yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. I'm all set. Thank you. Yeah. Employee of the Year Award. Mm. Okay. Tomorrow night, 7 o'clock, City Council Chambers. Um, Charlene O'Donnell from the Water Department will be this year's recipient of said award. You're welcome to attend. Um, every year we have an Employee of the Year, as the Board knows, um, and every year the managers of the department sit in this office and look at nominations and discuss the performance of many people within the department. And every year, um, it's a very difficult thing to pick one person. So it's a fun, it's a fun task to go through. It's very agonizing because we wish we could do more for the people. There are many, many good uh, employees here. But uh, it's Charlene's turn this year, and uh, she'll be shaking someone's hand at City Council to apply to. The mayor doesn't sit up at the big table anymore, so I don't know. Maybe yeah. he'll be there. And, and will she get a special parking space? She'll get something. I don't know. And then was the collector. Space. Net, no, <laughs> parking space? I don't know. And in and, and, and some businesses, they have a little awning over that space. Yes. Yeah. She's a space down at the water department. Uh, <laughs> she already had <laughs> Now, Jim was nominated this year, I understand. He was. Yeah. And uh, you know, I was joking that when you nominate yourself, you get plenty of recognition. <laughs> <laughs> Also nominated was uh, the city engineer. So. Oh, so with no name. No, with a name. Okay. With a name. Uh, I'm not really eligible to win, but, uh, but anyway, it'll be a great time for Charlene and Jim Dostal. I think we saw him last time. He'll be there, and, uh, and lots of people in the water department. Many, many people nominated Charlene. A lot of people love Charlene. And she's retiring. And she's the retiring. first season. Yeah. Yeah. Parking lot, parking space free upgrade. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right. can't wait. That's all I got. Uh, PJ? Awesome. Yeah. Good. Um, I have a little confession. I didn't realize that when we talked about doing our public way, um, private way, public way um, on J January 4th, that I may not be here that night that day, and I may also not be here for the January 8th board meeting. So I don't know if that makes a difference. So if everybody else is okay with those two dates still, then I'll just do the five man out. It's going to be easy. Oh, I think this one was going to be Oh, yeah, easy. especially with all those emails. I'm not worried about them, but I might not be here for the board meeting. Board meeting. So. I did, I did talk to Stanley about that extension today, and he's mm -hmm. aware that he's going to be filing his own petition mm -hmm. for the extension. Okay. Yeah. I might be here for both of them, but I just want to just throw out there. So not to seem clueless, but there's something on the fourth. Yes. Oh yeah, you were you were you were somewhere else. <laughs> so what the issue was is that, is that they thought that they wanted to take care of the final private way that hadn't come up. Uh, in the, um, what's it called? I'm sorry, for, I'm forgetting. Boggy, the, bo Boggy Meadow Road. Boggy Meadow Road, Road up by the um, Moose Lodge um, off of um, okay. Cook Ann, the Cook Ann. Walmart. What? Oh, Cook Ann. It's, it's like an extension. Cook Ann, Cook Ann. yeah. And um, so they said, oh, well, we can do it on the 4th of January and then we can visit it on the uh, board meeting on the 8th, which is the second one of the mm -hmm. month. Okay. Uh, what time of day is that? Uh, Nine o'clock in the morning. Okay. And just the one? Yes. I don't know if I'll be here either, but... Can I make one more comment before you say goodbye? Yes, the, the weather might be nice. We haven't gotten to you yet, but... <laughs> well, I may be in Puerto Rico. The weather will be nice. Yeah. Yes, sir. Now that you're on television, you may have more citizens taking an interest in your activities other than the couple of us that show up periodically. And you go through a lot of money every meeting. I mean, this time you didn't break 100000 but a lot of times you do. And you have a lot of bank accounts. And I don't think the general public knows, or even maybe you don't know, which pocket the money is coming out that you're spending. Like there were a lot today from the, the Water Enterprise Fund. Mm -hmm. But to somebody casually watching, they might think that's coming out of their tax bill, mm -hmm. their real estate tax bill. That's a good comment. So like that this. on your yeah. agenda and on your on your meetings, you know, when you do appropriate money, uh, it would be nice to say this funding is coming from the sewer fund, this mm -hmm. is coming from the water fund, this is coming from the solid waste fund, this is coming from the stormwater yeah. fund, and this is coming from the general fund.
one, and this is an emergency exit thing, which comes from who knows where. Yeah, yeah. I like it. So, uh, and if any of you ever decide to pop run for public office, I wish you would sit with your back to the camera so you can't grandstand like other people do. Here. <laughs> <laughs> so that does seem yeah, very cool. Yeah. Could we have, so that would be maybe that'd be a, a, a little bullet point on each. It can be that on the agenda, or we can verbally state what it is during the meeting. Okay. Well, I think it belongs on the agenda. Yeah. Okay. It would be preferable. This gets posted. It's online. It's sure. part sure. of the public do. record. Sure. You can reiterate it, of course. Can we do it on? Yes. So we don't have that. Yeah. Or for those of us who haven't had a chance to read the agenda. But. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I talked to Ned earlier. So. What's that? Um, talked to Ned earlier about the Suzanne Beck call from the chamber. Uh, businesses downtown are uh, a little frantic about the snow in the street. Understanding, but frantic. Um, it's the week before Christmas, and they're just concerned about the piles in the middle and the rain that's coming at the end of the week. Um, I told her that she could tell the chamber members that I'd first bring the issue to the board and um, Ned says he that Rich Parsoletti is trying to put together a crew to do picking tomorrow night um, so we'll find out about that mm -hmm. actually um, they're out tonight three guys are out tonight just for Main Street to pick up some yep, the they're picking up the center tonight nice well, because yeah. I was down there and I got stuck um, by faces where it's two yeah. lanes there was someone parked, and so only it had to go to one lane, so I was stuck there for about 10 minutes. And so when I came back, I asked Richie if they were going to do that. And they are doing, there's only three because they worked until about 1.30 last night. Yeah. So they're going to take care of the center at least. I should have talked right to PJ. <laughs> <laughs> I talked to Ned. I, there's a, I was at a, uh, I have a customer with a business down Holyoke. You know, and the secretary out front has a sign, do you want to talk to the guy in charge, or do you want to talk to the woman who knows what's going on? <laughs> <laughs> there uh, may be more tomorrow night. I think he said that they were going to right, have I'll a bigger curve, but to the tonight there's three out there. Um, so I, I suggested three parts I'd, I'd ask, answered, um, that I'd investigate whether there are any policy issues that we could so that it would be real predictable to the people downtown, and that tells me we, in fact, have that. We have an agreement with the bid and our service delivery, which we try to adhere to. <coughs> Sometimes you can't, mm -hmm. like the blizzard last year. We just sure. couldn't do it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. could, could you send me a copy of that that I can forward? Sure. There? And then lastly, apropos of Dave Murphy, I said they have to start lobbying the city council to put more money in for would it matter if we were fully funded as part of the budget as opposed to the current method if we had more staff yeah, yeah that's what it is it's, it's, staff. Really a, staffing it's, issue. it's a staffing issue that's what we have it's a staffing issue of getting everything done and that isn't something we could farm out we already farm out to seven contractors for snow removal operations or not removal, but snow plowing operations. But we're the only ones that have the big equipment for doing the picking downtown. Uh, unless we hired a third party contractor to come in and help. Yeah. I was just suggesting that we need to make more noise about that. If they want us to have more money to do that and to do it more promptly, there's a cost mm -hmm. to that. Okay. That's all I got. Motion we adjourn. Yes. Second. Second.